privilege to be here tonight. A great privilege to be here to serve the Lord Jesus. We're sorry that we don't have sufficient room, knowing that you have to stand and it makes you tired and all. Now, I asked if there was some larger place that we could get, and I don't think there is at the time. But we will try to make our messages just as short as we can. And you be patient, bear with us just a little while. And now, remember the services tomorrow evening, and then Sunday afternoon and Sunday evening also. Now tonight, if it be the will of the Lord, I wish to read a portion of the scripture. And then you pray for me as I speak tonight. It's been a horse since I've been up here. Not a bad cold, but just an overtaxed body. Let me move this thing around. I've been up here. The transposition of that. All right, I think that'll be just a little better. Now, in the reading tonight, let's go back to a very familiar scripture that's familiar to all. One found in the blessed old Bible, and I believe every word that the Bible says is the truth. And I know that all Christians do the same. And this is a very familiar reading. John 3.16 For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Now let us bow our heads just a moment for prayer. O oh, blessed and eternal God who brought again the Lord Jesus from the dead and he has now been presented to us after 1900 years, yet alive, and just as sufficient in his power and in his presence as he was 1900 years ago when he walked in Galilee. And we thank thee, our Father, because thou hast done this to us. And in this dark, evil day that we are living, when there is so much confusion on every hand, among the world and in the nations, in politics, and in every walk of life, even to the Christian walk, yet there is confusion. But we are so glad to know that Jesus still lives. And as the scripture has said of him, the same yesterday, today, and forever. And when we see the end approaching rapidly, and the signs of his near coming, our hearts jump for joy when we rest upon this blessed promise that he is the same, that he loves us, and he gave himself for us. We will ask thee tonight, God, to be merciful to us and pardon us of our sins and trespasses. Give to us exceedingly abundantly tonight, for our weary hearts need it in these days. Bless everyone in divine presence and heal every sick person that's come tonight expecting and we know that thou will not send one hungry person away unsatisfied, for that's your nature, your God. Bless the word as we have read it, and give to us the context of this word for this evening's message, for we ask it in the name of that all-sufficient one, the Lord Jesus. Amen. I suppose there isn't a child that's attended Sunday school many times, but I could quote this little passage of scripture here. 
just a little small portion of the word of the eternal and everlasting God. And it's not very much, but it isn't the reading or how much we read, it's the value of what we read. It doesn't make any difference whether it's very long or not. It's the value of what we have read. That is where we can rest our faith because it's the word of the living God. And now, some time ago, talking the values of things, over and across the river in Louisville, Kentucky, across from where I live, there was a little boy that was up in the attic of his home. And he was searching through some old relics and things that belonged to the family. And he found an old trunk. And he dug into this old trunk that had the way to see what he could find. And he found a little postage stamp that had turned yellow. It was just about one half inch square. The little lad looked at it and he said, that might be worth a nickel. And a nickel would buy me an ice cream cone. So with the ice cream cone on his mind, he rushed down the street to a stamp collector. And this collector looked at it and he said, what will you give me for this postage stamp? Not expecting to receive over five cents. And he said, after the stamp collector looked at it, he knew it was old stamp, so he said, I'll give you one dollar for it. Oh, the little lad was very happy. That meant many ice creams. So he sold a stamp for one dollar. And about six weeks later, this stamp collector sold it for fifty dollars. Sometime later, it was sold for five hundred dollars. And now they claim it's worth a quarter of a million dollars. Now we know that a little piece of paper, half its square, would not be worth even picking up on the street. But it wasn't the value of the paper, it's the value lays in what's on the paper. And that's the way it is with God's Word. It isn't just the paper that it's wrote on, but it's the value of it is because it's the Word of the eternal God. Hallelujah. Yes. Amen. And Jesus said, Heavens and earth will pass away, but my Word shall never fail. Therefore, John 3.16 tonight, although small in its portion, holds enough value to save the world. Hallelujah. It's got enough value in it to heal every sick person that's on the earth today. It's a pardon to every sinner. It's joy to every weary person. It's hope for the hopeless. It's food for the saint. It's healing for the sick. It's a pardon for those who are troubled. It's a, all of these things to you if you receive it as that. Some time ago there was a case, I believe it was in the days of Abraham Lincoln, that a man had committed a crime, and he was found guilty, and the punishment of this was to die by a firing squad. 
And some good friend slipped out and went before the president on his knees and begged for the pardon of this man. And Mr. Lincoln, not in his office, made his decision that he would pardon the man. So he just wrote it on a little piece of paper, pardon so-and-so, Abraham Lincoln, President of the United States. He bowed and thanked the man and then rushed quickly to the man in the prison. Hallelujah. And he said, my friend, I have your pardon. He said, let me see it. And he presented this little piece of paper. And the criminal said, oh, it isn't enough. If it was a real pardon, it would be wrote out on a great big piece of paper. It would tell why I was pardoned, so you're just kidding me. And he could not be persuaded to take his pardon. And the next morning, the man died by a firing squad. And then notice, there is a signed document by the President of the United States that says this man is pardoned. And it was written the day before his execution. Then it was tried in federal courts. And here is the federal court's decision. A pardon is not a pardon unless it be received as a pardon. And that's the way the word of God is. It's a pardon to those who will receive it as a pardon. Yes, it's healing to those who will receive it as a healing pardon. Yes, and every divine promise of God is true if it be received in the right middle attitude. Yes, I say this tonight as a minister of the gospel. And I've seen it tried. I've had the privilege of preaching around the world. And before tens of thousands of people, and every divine promise in the Bible is true. Amen. And if you take the right mental attitude towards any of God's divine promises will bring it to pass. If you can take the right mental attitude. And in our scripture reading tonight, it says God so loved the world. Hallelujah. If there is anything that the world is dying for today is love. Amen. In my travels, I find that that is the rejected stone that keeps the building from being fit together. Where the assemblies in the Church of God and the Baptists and the Methodists will all shake hands and be brothers if they just had love one for the other. Come on now. Wonderful. That is the great need the world is dying for. And God is love. Hallelujah. Now there's five in the church that's what hindered the church has been the wrong conception of love. Now love, there's two different types of love. That's real love. One of them in the Greek word is called a gospel. That's God's love. And then a perverted love, from that is filial love, which means human love. Filial comes from the word fellowship. The filial love is what you have for your wife. And a man might flirt with her or insult her and you'd shoot his brains out over it. That's what filial love will do. It accompanies jealousy. And many other things go with it. But a gospel love will make you pray for his sinful soul. That's 
that's the difference between the two loves. God's love is the beginning of love. It's the fountain of love. Hallelujah. And the church today is lacking in that. I got it. That real agape love that makes you have love for your enemy. Oh, if we only had that kind of a love, there'd be a revival sweep this nation from coast to coast. And from north to south. Thank you, Jesus. And the reason that we do not have that love, that is the main reason the church is not progressing like it should. We don't need theology. We only need real love to go with the theology we already know. We are arguing so much whether we should be baptized backwards or forwards or whatever more. But it don't make any difference how you're baptized or what church you belong to or what evidences you have that you're a Christian if you haven't got love, you haven't got God. We need love. God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. Now when love is projected and it comes to its end, sovereign grace produces what love projected. When God so loved the world that His love was at the end of its going and then that love projected sovereign grace that gave us a Savior. That's how we got Jesus. Amen. It's because that God loved the world. Something was produced because of His love. And Jesus the Savior was produced The grand old story that we so forget so easy. Way over in Switzerland many years ago, and some of you men and women around my age can remember reading it in your readers. Switzerland was a little group of people that went up in the mountains out of Germany. And they had themselves a little economy. There was no warring people. There were peaceful people. And all of a sudden there came a war against them. And the Swiss got their old sickle blades and sticks, rocks and what they could find, and went down out of the mountains to meet the enemy on the plains. And there they were, standing there, all backed up, just a little group of people and a great marching army coming like a brick wall. They didn't have a chance. But there was one a hero among them by the name of Arnold von Winkler. And he kissed his wife and his babies goodbye a few hours before he went to battle. He loved his home. He loved his nation. Therefore, his love constrained him to do something about it. And he said, Man of Switzerland, this day I'll give my life for Switzerland. They said, What will you do, Arnold Don Winkler? He said, Just follow me and fight with what you've got. And he threw up his arms. And he looked towards the deepest of the spheres as they marched on like one great big wall. And he found the deepest of the spheres. And he screamed, Make way for liberty! And he started running with his hands in the air. And he screamed again, Make way for liberty! Before he left his ranks, he said, across the mountain on it is a little white home. And 
hear it. Amen. Amen. And that's the reason people won't take God at His word for healing. They don't love Him well enough because you're scared He won't keep His word. Amen. Uh, that's the reason that people fear somebody else will say something against them if they receive the Holy Spirit. Amen. They're afraid somebody will lay it and make fun. Uh-huh. But when life comes in, why make Moses leave Egypt, the throne, for that is his feet, but he has seen the reproach of Christ's greater riches than all the treasures of Egypt. Well, not to say now I'll make it better for you, but to take the place with his people. That was the spirit of Christ that made him take his place with the people. That's what made Christ take his place with the people. That's what makes a Christian today come out and take his stand with Christ. Live it on. Fellowship. Love one another. And you love God and you're not scared what the devil's got to say or do. Hallelujah. When this maniac pulled back his great arms, and something or another happened. Oh, I wish I could live that way all the time. And it rushed towards me. And he drew back his great mighty arms. Now you better not be just kidding. Amen. You better know what you're talking about. Yes. And with which doctors in Africa, Hoodoo man in India, they'll challenge you. But if you really love him, don't be scared. He said, I'll be with you. Amen. 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 So the man got real close to me, and the people just hushed. And he dropped back his foot, hopped and spit all over my face. And he said, you snake in the grass. I'm going to show how much servant of God you are. I'm going to knock you way out in the middle of that audience. He was well able to keep his threat. But he didn't know God. That was the main thing. I kept real still. Never said a thing. And my heart was going out to him. Now you just can't imagine that. It's got to be real. Right. The people have seen so much put on love till they're sick and tired. Yeah. Right. He wants you all. If you're a Christian, be one. God's grace will make you one. Amen. And the man walked closer to me. And I loved him because I knew he didn't mean that. I thought it's the devil that makes that man say that. Amen. He's a man who would love his family like I do mine. He would like to eat and drink and fellowship. But the thing of it is, is because the devil has possessed him. He's a human being the same as I am. Those kind of thoughts. <coughs> and you can't do that unless God does it for you. That's all right. And when he got close to me, he drew back his arms and he said, I'm just going to knock you out in the middle of that audience and break every bone in that little old frail body of yours. I never opened my mouth and said a word. But then all of a sudden, something began to speak. And the Holy Spirit began to speak and said, because you are challenged, the Spirit of God tonight you will fall over my feet. There was four threats, four prophecies. He said, I'm going to knock you out in the middle of the audience. The Spirit of God said, you will fall over my feet. He said, I'll show you whose feet I'll fall over. And he drew back his arm to strike me. And still that was my fear. I wasn't there because I wanted to be seen. I was there with a commission from God to the people. And when he started to strike, something within me said, Satan, leave the man. And when it did, his great eyes seemed to push out, his teeth set together, 
and he turned around and fell over my feet to the police and had to come and roll him off. Hallelujah. What was it? Love. Love will conquer the mightiest enemy there is on the face of the Here some time ago, I was in Mexico last year. That little baby that morning that they brought over to the knee. And if they died at nine o'clock that morning, they were standing by the tens of thousands. Twenty thousand came to Christ that night. Twenty thousand, I said, I do not want Catholics or evangelicals. I want people who have never received Christ at all. And they tagged twenty thousand. But there's a little woman down there screaming with a blanket. Then he was with the man who would get out the prayer cards, and they had around 200 or 300 ushers. And that 300 ushers couldn't keep that little woman out of line. She was climbing on their backs. <laughs> oh, what was the matter? Her baby had died at 9 o'clock that morning. And it was a ten early that night. After a long tussle, a little lady now over 25 years old, very beautiful looking little woman. And she kept screaming and the ushers trying to push her back. She'd go beneath her legs, over her shoulders or anything. Her love for her baby. And I could hear those screams, Padra, Padra means father, which is Catholic. And as she screamed, Billy come to me and he said, Daddy, you've got to do something with that woman. So she has her prayer card. And we can't be just a little in the line without a prayer card. Let us stood here from Rio daylight this morning to get a prayer card. And I said, well, Brother Moore, Brother Jack Moore, Shreveport, Louisiana. I said, you go down and see if you could pray for her baby or whatever's wrong. And... He started off, and I looked up here in front of me, and I seen by vision a little baby. Oh my God. <laughs> I said, just a minute, oh Lord. <laughs> you see, solid love will protect the grace of God every time. <laughs> I said, maybe I better go to the baby. I said, oh, she's on her this is not right. According to our rules, they have to have a prayer card. But let the little lady come here. And when she come up, she fell down. I said, stand up. I couldn't make her understand. And I put my hand up on that blanket. I never even seen the baby. And I said, my body was just as wet as it could be. It had been raining all day. They had no place to sit down. They were standing leaning against each other. Just as far as you could see in that big full rain. And I said, Lord God, I do not know what this is all about. But I see a little Spanish baby in a vision just now. And when they hands on that wet blanket, Jehovah God, who is my church, he squealed in love and screamed and began to keep the blanket But not a hypocrite, but a real, genuine love for her baby. Protect with the solid grace of the Almighty God. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, Jesus. How simple it is to believe it. Without long ago, you can get to some awful predicaments, as we all know. I was sitting on the porch talking to my associate here, Brother Gold and Brother Mercer. And we were talking about a young colored girl who had killed her baby the day before she was left. Had an illegitimate child. And the child, she wrapped it in a blanket and smothered it. Got in the cab and went out of the river and dropped it into the river. The cab driver reported it to the coast guard. They sang the bundle out and found a little baby killed. But the baby had not drowned and had died from suffocation. And 
their picture was in the paper. And I was telling my brethren, sitting on the porch, I said, you know, that woman isn't no, not even, should be called a woman. I said, dog has better morals than that woman. And just then we were coming down the road, and my house is a porch from the highway of a lane, or a little avenue you might call it here. And it's the only house that's got a fence around it. Well, I look coming up and coming into the driveway, and there come an old possum. Now, you people in Virginia know what possums are. I was a game warden for many years in Indiana, and I studied wildlife. It's one of my studies. And anyone knows that a possum doesn't travel in the daytime. A possum travels at night. And then it lays up and sleeps in the daytime. Now, so look for the old gene. Here comes a possum. And when he got in front of my gate, he turned in. And I noticed him leaning sideways like this with one leg dragging. And I jumped up and ran out there, and there was a rake laying in the yard. And I took the rake and laid over the possum, and I said, it's perhaps got rabies. Because it's hot weather now, July, I think it was June or July. And I said, it's got rabies, perhaps, and therefore we better stop it. And when I stopped the possum, I happened to look, and her leg was all chewed up where a car had hit her or dogs had chewed her. And it was swollen twice the size, and I don't mean to be make you sick, but the flies had grown it and there were maggots and fly blows all in the leg. And I said, oh, it's been hurt a few days before this. And I helped the rake on it. Usually, they what you call play possum, lay down. But not her, she was biting at the yard rail. And then a possum is the, the second animal, a kangaroo and a possum, is the only two that has a pocket to carry the little ones in. And I noticed when she let her pocket down, there were nine little naked baby possums about that long. And they were trying to nurse her. I said, here it is, boys. She's a mother. And I said, come here, Jean, and about that time, Mrs. Woods, which, and Mr. Woods, which was a formerly a Jehovah Witness, and the boy, then he was with his pair eyes up on him, so much that he don't even know which way he was, is drawn up now. And they had moved over next door to me, and she's a vet here. And it come up there to look, and she said, look at that. I said, boys, that possum is more of a mother than that woman was a January baby. That's right. I said, she probably hasn't got over an hour yet to live. But she's willing to give that hour fighting for her babies. Yes. She's a real mother. Hallelujah. And then when I helped her lay over a little bit, and I, Mrs. Wood said, Brother well, Brown, what are you going to do with her? I said, I don't know. He said, well, you better kill her and just take down the ones and kill them because it's got a round mouth they can't nurse and they'll die nursing from her. And I said, I just can't do it. And she said, I thought you was a hunter. I said, I'm a hunter, but I'm not a killer. Yeah. And she said, well, you don't mean that she thought she was right. And you mean that she was. She said, you're going to let him suffer like that? I said, I don't know why, Miss Woods, but I just can't kill her. said, let my husband Banks kill her. I said, no, I can't let him do it. said, then you're going to let her lay there and die like that. I said, I guess that's what it'll be. I raised her up like that, the rake, and those little possums, she cupped them up right quick and ran up in front of my door and collapsed and went over then when we were collapsing, we shook her. Didn't know whether she's dead or not. She said, then you're going to let them little babies nurse that old milk from her and die a horrible death. I said, it's, I guess so. So all day, people coming and going. Night come, she's still in there. 
Well, Mr. Woods come up to get me away from the crowd, take me a little ride. Visions made me a week. And I rode out in the country a little bit. After a while, when we come back about 11 o'clock, there lived the old mother possum laying there. And anyone knows that she's ever gone to the moon, she'd move when the sun went down. She took off. But there she was laying there. And my wife said, Benny, are you going to let her die like that? I said, I guess she's already dead. I said, look at that little baby's mercy. Said, they're starving. Said, probably they can't get no milk of her being dead. I kicked on her a few times with my foot touching her. I seen a little grin on the side of her face like, I said, she's not dead. We went in, Billy, my boy. He come in about midnight, been fishing. And he seen her laying there. All night long, I couldn't get it over my mind. Next morning, I went out real early, and I looked at that little old possum do all over, the little girl was still nursing. And I had to look standing by my side, and my little girl, Rebecca, very spiritual child, just saw her first vision just a little bit ago. And she said, Daddy, what are you going to do with that old mother possum? Is she dead? I said, I don't know, honey. I said, you ought to be out here that early. Run on in the house. I said, go to bed just with her little pajamas on. I said, run on in the house and go to bed. Daddy is coming back. I went into my den room. I sat down, began to rub my forehead like that, my head down. I don't know what you think about this. That's up to you and God. But something said to me, what are you going to do about her? I said, I don't know. I wasn't thinking. And I said, oh, I don't want to kill her. I said, you preached the sermon about her yesterday of being on your mother. I said, yes, that's right. I said, she's laid at your door for 24 hours waiting for her turn to be prayed for and you've never said a word about it. I said, well, I didn't know. I said, who am I talking to anyhow? I shook my head. And I thought, that was a voice. And I thought, oh, God. You got the evil through the path of there. A sparrow cannot fall through the street without you knowing about it. You mean that you got it, that poor ignorant possum up to the scripture? Yes. I said, forgive your stupid servant. Yes, my Lord. And I walked out there and looked like he was still looking over the banister. And I went down there to where she was standing, laying there. I said, Lord God, forgive me. And if you wanted me to pray for this mother possum, and you have guided her by instinct, she doesn't have a soul because she's an animal. You know what? That possum so more about God and other creatures does. And she's laying there. And I said, Lord God, forgive me and let her be well. My Bible thing open here before me. You might have read it in the Christian business, man. It went on the National Press, the Associated Press. That old mother possum raised up, gathered up her nine baby, walked out that road just as happy as she could be, that tail turned sideways and looked around at the gate and didn't say, thank you, sir, and off to the week she went to her baby.
It's the little atmosphere you live in. Just before closing, I'd like to say this. Just a little story comes into my mind. As everyone knows, I love to hunt. And I was used to hunt up in the North Woods, up in New Hampshire. Oh, I just love to get into the woods. There's something about the woods that's godly. Yeah. How can a man look at a flower or a tree or get a foot run and know there's no God? That's right. God says in nature. Yes. Yes, what makes that tree up here in Virginia? Got pretty leaves in the summertime. And what makes that set run down out of that tree and run into the roots and hide for the wind? But why do a stick and see it go down that way? It's God! Yeah. What makes that little flower that you planted last summer that's dead? Cross come and kill it. Thou didn't so hear and gave up the spirit. They had a funeral procession. The October rains cried. And it buried the little seed. It's frozen. The seed burst up and the pulp ran out. Now there's no seed, pulp, nothing. But somewhere down in that ground, oh my God. that sun came by. There's a dream of white kids oh. and that sun rises in the east and it's still here again. Amen. And God so loved the flower that he made a way for it to live again. How much more has he made a way for a man to play in his age? God's in nature. He's in love. I would hunt the northern white boy deer with a friend of mine. He was a good hunter. I loved to hunt with him. And he was a good tracker and he didn't have to think about him getting lost and we'd travel over the mountains 30 miles a day. Up on the wind blows and everywhere. You didn't have to worry about him. He was always a good shot and a good tracker. I like to hunt with him, but he was the meanest man I ever seen. Just cruel hearted. He was shooting little bows and little farms just to make me feel bad. You know how sinners are. It's just trying to show off, that's all. They do it to do it. People know how I hate to see a woman smoke cigarettes. And the devil sends over cigarettes wherever he can around. That's right. That's just to show off. You don't show off, you just show what you're made out of. That's right. That's all. That's right. Now, and this guy, it's all right to shoot a fawn. If the law says you can have it, then I'll shoot a whole string of them just to be mean. The fawn's all right. Abraham killed a calf and God eat it. Amen. It's no harm, but to be evil with it. And he would like to do it just to make me feel bad. And one year when I went up there, he made his neck a little whistle. And he could go just like a little baby fawn crying. And I said, Bert, you're not going to use that. He said, oh, Billy, get next to yourself. You preachers are chicken hearted. I said, no, we're not. But we just don't have those evil things in us. He said, get next to yourself. And that day we hunted till about noon. There's a snow on the ground about like it is now. We had not even seen a track. We come much time about hours behind him. There's a little clearing. And he kind of hunkered down. Now you said it, there's no one hunkered down. <laughs> and when we did, I thought he was going to take his lunch out. But what did he have? This little whistle. I thought he's not going to blow that. And he blew it. And to my surprise, about 30 yards away, a great big doe stood up. Now, a doe is a mother deer. I could see the great veins in her face, those big brown eyes and graceful looking ears. She stood up. She looked. Now, that's unusual at that time of day. Any hunting brother knows that. And he blew again. And she stepped out into the open. That's altogether contrary to the nature of the deer to show himself in the open like that in the hunting seasons. And she was looking. What was the matter? She was a mother. Her baby was in trouble. And Bert looked up to me at that real sheepish looking grin. I thought, oh, surely Bert, you're not going to do that. I see you fall back forever. 
Joshua went into that thirty ox six, and he leveled down the gun. And when he did, the deer saw the hunter. She staggered. She looked, but she stood still and used it all away. But what was it? It was the baby in trouble. She wasn't putting that on. It was real, genuine, mother love. <laughs> and she seen the hunter. And I see him little that rifle down. He was a dead shot. Now I thought, first dude, he surely can't do that. I thought, in another second, he'll blow her heart from out the other side. Just standing that close. And she was watching. Yet death was facing her. She still was a mother. There was a real love in her. Her baby was in trouble with it, and it her life. She still walked out to face danger. She was looking for that baby. I couldn't watch it. I know just any moment he would blow her to pieces. I turned my head and I thought, oh God, how can he be so brutal? And I was listening to hear the gun go off. I waited and I waited. There was no fire. I looked around. And the gun barrel was going like this. <laughs> and he turned and looked at me. He threw the gun on the ground. He grabbed me with the weight. He said, to me, I've had enough of it. Please <laughs> give me that Jesus that you know. Right there on that snow bank, I left that cruel hearted man to Christ, which is a lovely saint tonight. What was it? Because he found something real. A real love that could be displayed in the face of death. My friend, that's what God wants tonight. That's, that's what Christians ought to be tonight. To display the love of Jesus Christ regardless of what the circumstances is. Think of it. As a Christian, you might belong to the finest church in this country. But has God ever come to your heart to give you a love that would stand in the face of people who would call you for the Lord? You would take your stand with the church of the living God. Yeah. If they said you lost your mind because you accepted him as your healer, you would still stand in the yeah. praises of God. Right. That love in you, if not said for him, and backslider, God sure to give it to you. Think of it while we bow our heads. Just before we pray, I want to ask the question. I want you to think sincerely. Oh, you say, Brother Brown, I, I, I've been a Christian for a long time. Maybe you joined church a long time ago. Maybe you, you might have, have danced in the Spirit some time ago. You might have spoken the tongue some time ago. You might have been baptized by a certain creed in the church. You might have burned a candle every night and say a rosary. But I want to ask you something. Really, do you love him that you could display his love that was still between you and death to do so? I want all of us in here that really know to be sincere because you're in the presence of God. All of us in here that know you haven't got that love in your heart, but you want God to give it to you. Would you just raise your hand to him? That's right. God bless you, sure. 150, 200, I guess, maybe 300 hands up. God, give me that love. Give to me the love of Christ like that mother dear had. So just for her love for the baby. You say, Brother Adam, is the love of God greater than that far greater? A mother may forget her second baby, but never do I forget you. Your names are engraved on the palms of my hands. Sure, by a Roman spike, God so loved the world that He gave His Son. Will there be some more who's made up their mind since then? God bless you here, sonny. God bless you, lady. God bless you, sir. That's right. Someone else that hasn't raised their hands. God be merciful to me. So, does it do me any good to raise my hand over there? Sure. 
If you needed a change in death life, God bless you, sir. Be sincere now. God bless you, little boy. Some of us up the balcony, yes, God be with you. God give you, God bless you there, brother. Give to me life, God, oh, bless you. I'm a church member, God bless you, and you, sister, and you, sister. I'm a church member, brother, Brandon, God bless you. But I haven't yet got that love. There's no need to be saying it, because I haven't got it, but I want something real. God bless you, brother, you're against the wall. Out of the best of you, you raise your hand anywhere on there. Sinner friend or backsider or just a cold, lukewarm church member. Say, be merciful. God bless you, sir. That takes a real man to do it. God bless you, brother. Say, does God see you? Sure, he sees you. God bless you, young man. Good peace, Lord. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And we did it. God bless you, here, young man. We just try to join church and we maybe shout a little or dance a little or speak with pastors. I'm all right. I'm nothing against that. But brother, if you haven't got the love of God to go with that, it's no good. Paul said, where well, there's prophecies, it'll fail. Where there's tongues, it'll cease. Where there's knowledge, it'll vanish. But that which is perfect is love. When it comes, it'll endure forever. Man trying to write songs, they go insane. No one, one more, one time. If we would ink the ocean fill and were the skies of parchment made, with every stalk on earth of quill and every man ascribed by trade, to write the love of God above and drain the ocean dry, or could the scroll contain the whole those stretched from sky to sky? When the, when the earth is staggering like a man coming home from by atomic power shaking her. When the oceans has wet herself into deserts and seeing it reach the ears of God and the stars refuse to shine, the love of God will still be the same. It can never fail. God so loved you that He gave His Son that you might be saved and filled with His Spirit and have His love projected into your heart by the Holy Ghost. Make you love everybody. That's the reason Christians have your ups and downs the way they do. Or you could be on a housetop no matter what condition you're in. If you love God, you know where you stand. Is there another now before prayer? God bless you, lady, at the balcony. God bless you, sir. God bless you, friend. That's right. All right, brother, it is thou. God bless you, damn your lady. I just thought maybe a minute longer. You say, brother, Graham, what does that mean when you raise your hand? It means this. You defy every law of science. Science says your hands must hang down. Gravitation holds your hands down. But you raise your hand up. How did you do it? You broke the scientific rule because there's a spirit in you. There was a spirit in you. And that spirit made a decision that you were wrong. And you raise your hand to your Creator. Don't you think He don't know it? No way He can come except my Father draws Him. And all that comes, I'll give Him everlasting life and raise Him up at the last day. It's death and life when you raise your hand to Him. If you really mean it. He that heareth my word and believeth on Him except He has eternal life and shall never come to judgment, but is passed from death into life. Raise your hand and say, Lord, I now believe that Jesus Christ, God's Son, gives me the kind of love the God will love that I really need and I accept it in Christ's name. Heavenly Father, Thou didst see the great host of hands that's been spread up towards the sky. And I'm sure that the recorded angels are standing there. Well, I know that you're there. And you said, the angels of God are encamped about those. They don't leave, they just stay there, they make their camp there about those who fear Him and love Him. And now, Lord, I pray that you receive each one of them as the fruits of the message tonight, and may they be peacefully and safely taken through life. And in that day when death strikes, whenever it may be, may the angels of God bear their soul across Jordan to the other side in the bosoms of God, where they'll be kept forever. Grant it, Lord. Take care of them. They're yours. They're the fruits of the message, and you are giving them to your Son, the Lord Jesus, as love gifts. 
Your love was sent forth to the meeting tonight. It projected weeping sinners, backsliders that raised their hands. Now you present them to Christ, for they are love gifts, and He promised He'd give them everlasting life and raise them up at the last day. May you have a display of love from this night on. The real love of God, like the old mother dear did, that we just talked about. Grant it, Lord, for I submit them unto thee in the name of Jesus, thy son. Amen. Well, the Bible says that he is now, right now, a high priest that could be touched by the feeling of our infirmities. Amen. Did he say a little while and the world won't see me no more? Yet ye shall see me, who's ye, the world being believers. Who's ye, his church? Ye shall see me, for I, personal pronoun, will be with you, even in you, to the end of the world. How many knows that? Amen. The things that I do shall you also. You don't believe that? All right. Then will the eat ever get that sign before one Gentile? Just Jew and Samaritan. Why? This is the, that's the end of the Jewish age. This is the end of the Gentile age. That was his sign as Messiah. If he's raised from the dead, he's obligated to do the same thing now that he did then or he did wrong when he did it then. When the circumstances arise, listen close. When the circumstances arise and the way God acts the first time, he has to act every time the same way or he acted wrong when he acted the first time. Man. Right? So if that's the way he made himself known then, promised he would do it to the Gentiles, look through the history, it's never been until now. Gentiles, you're giving your last call. Let us pray. Now, Lord, the rest is to you. I can only speak thy word, and I pray that you'll manifest yourself tonight as the risen Son of God, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Grant it, Lord, and then at the end time, we pray that every soul that's here tonight will be safely cared for, taken over the river of death, raised up in the last day with our Lord, who we shall sit with Him and live with Him and be with Him forever. And now we know you're here. You said wherever two or three are gathered in my name, I'll be in their midst. Now, Lord, we pray that you'll manifest your being here tonight, for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Where was we calling from? What? Why? All right, prayer cards, why? We've been called, I believe, first night, the 25 and the 50 and then 30 or something. That's a why. Prayer card, why? It's a little card, got a why. Now, if you're not called, hold your card. We'll get to it. Let's start from... Let's just skip around a whole bunch of them, mix them all up tonight. Just get some from one place and some another. Hundred. All right. All right. Let's start from Y number one. Who has number one? Anybody have prayer card Y number one? Raise up your hand. Where's that? Would you come here, lady, to where I am? Y number two. Would you hold up your hand? Y number two, the lady back here. Now the boys bring them down and mix them all up. Give them out to the audience. The old timers, the ones that's been here before, knows how we do it. We come down here and mix the cards over. Give them to anybody that wants them. Nobody knows where the prayer line's going to start until we get right here that this night. Then sometimes we start from one place to another and mix them up and everything. All right, why number two? Number three? Why number three? Would you hold up your hand? Number three, the man. Number four? Would you hold up your hand? Why number four? The gentleman way back there, would you come here, sir? All right, see, so they're all over the building. Um, why number five? Would you hold up your hand? Why number five? Right here, the man, come here, sir. All right, let's stop now. Let's go somewhere else. Let's go to Y50. Who has Y50? Hold up your hand. Y50. Anywhere in the building? In the back, somebody says in the back. Stand. Oh, here you are. All right, sir, come here. Y50. Y51. All right. Y51, Y52. Would you hold up your hand? 52, 53. 53. All right. Come right here. 54. Y54. 55. 
वहां से शिकायत हो रहे हैं और एक स्त्री पृथ्वी थे जिसको ऐसे वा नानी पा टू एस वा नानी पा रेज अपर है वा नानी पा यू हाउ राइट एवर वर्ड इज टू नानी सिक्स नानी सिक्स हाउ राइट नानी सेवन नानी सेवन प्लीज नानी एट नानी नाइन हंड्रेड एट दिस मिक्स ऑफ ऑल ऑफ ऑल टू The, we don't care who stands. It's just the idea of getting someone here to the platform. Now, I'm going to ask you something. Now, do you realize the position where I stand? I preach the gospel sermon, not so much on divine healing, because the main thing is the soul before God. Amen. That's what we're here for: is to get people saved, get them right with God. Divine healing is just a a benefit that goes with your life insurance policy. Praise God. It's just a benefit. The day that said, "Rest the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all of His benefits." How many know that? Who what? Forget all your iniquity, who heals all your diseases. Did He say that? That's, right. That's the benefit that goes with it. Now, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. I want to know how many of you believe that. Amen. The way he was yesterday, principle, power, action, works, and everything, he's got to be the same today if he is the same. How many knows that? Amen. All right. He is the same. Yesterday, today, and forever. Now, if you'll be real ever, just for a little bit, don't move around now. Just sit real still. Now, how many in here that does not have a prayer card wants God to heal you? Raise your hand. Does not have a prayer card. There's no way of telling this word, word, who's who. All right? If you will look this way, if the anointing of the angel of the Lord comes, Christ, how many see the picture of it now? Got the picture here, all right? It's your Washington, D.C. We don't know how really to call it ours. The only supernatural being that's ever proved by the FBI or anything else to be scientifically proved that a supernatural being has picture taken. A pillar of fire that led the children of Israel. How many know that pillar of fire was Christ? That's right. How many know when he was sure on earth, he said, I come from God and I go to God? How many know that? Yeah. And when he went back to God, Paul made him after his resurrection on the road to Damascus. What was it? A pillar of fire again, a light that put his eyes out. Is that right? Amen. Peter, while he was praying, he come as a light through the, the prison, went into delivery, opened the gates in front of him, took him out. Is that right? He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. What will it do? Any spirit, anything, any life will bear a record of itself. Now, if that angel of God, whose picture you see here, if that angel of God is of Christ, it will bear the works of Christ. How many know that? It will bear the works of Christ. If it don't bear the works of Christ, then it isn't Christ. If I had the spirit of John Dillinger, I'd have done. I'd be a... No Thomas character. Whatever spirit you are, that's what bears your record. Now, if I said I could heal you, I'd be telling you something wrong. I cannot heal you. What is it? It's a gift that I have that God gave me, not so by laying hands on me. That don't work. Gifts and callings are without repentance. You're born with them. Amen. In all your life. The Bible says so. Moses was born with them. A prophet. John the Baptist, 712 years before he was born, he is the voice of one crying in the wilderness. God told Jeremiah, before you was even conceived in your mother's womb, I knew you sanctified and ordained your prophet to the nation. God's election, calling, not that you're any better than anybody else. We're all the same. We're just children. But God has chose some to be one thing and some another. And if you get where God chose you, then you can yield yourself and that spirit will work through you. Just like these ministers here. Well, they're called preachers. They don't get up here to preach here. I'm not a preacher. I wouldn't say I was a preacher because I had no education. But the other man there could get up here and preach. They're, what they're preaching is inspired. They yield themselves to the Spirit of God. They have a way of doing that. First is what? Apostles. Then prophets. Then teachers, then evangelists, 
Then pastors. Everybody knows that. That's the offices of the church. God said to me. Now, if our contention is right, and Jesus Christ was raised from the dead, and this is a gift that he so he'll work, he'll bear his record. Here stands a woman. I've never seen her in my life. How many of you here is total strangers? Me, raise up your hand. Total stranger, I don't know. Or in the prayer line, I don't know, raise up your hand. There we are. Total stranger. Don't go no more. The lady raised her hand. I'll raise my hand. We've never met. I walk right out here just I want the audience to see. Now, this is not in a dark room, as the devil would do. This is right out here before you all. God's a God of life. Hallelujah. He lives in life. He is a consuming fire. Hallelujah. Now, the lady and I never have seen each other. I don't know her. She don't know me. You say, Brother Brown, what are you stalling for? For that angel of the Lord. If he doesn't anoint, then I can do nothing. It's him. If I get myself from, from talking on the word, yield it to the Spirit, then it works. Now, if I said to the woman, she might be an infidel, she might be a hypocrite, she might be a prostitute, she might be a, a, a saint, she might be sick, I don't know nothing about her. I've never seen her. But God does know her. Now, whatever she is, if I walked up to her and said, Lady, you're sick. Yes. Praise the Lord, you're going to be healed. She just got my word for that. She said he could have guessed that. But if the Holy Spirit will go back down in her life and tell her something, whether she knows, she'll know whether that's right or not, then that has to be God. It has to be. Jesus said he, would, he did that. Every one of the true worshipers believed he was the Son of God because he did that. The apostles finally said this, We believe now that you are the Son of God. You have no, you know all things, have no need that any man should teach you. And by this, you, perceiving your thoughts and knowing these things, we know that you were sent from God. Amen. Jesus said, Do you now do? After all those things that he did. Now, if the lady, knowing this now, if the Lord Jesus will perform the same thing here that he did at the well of Samaria, how many of you will believe with all your heart? All right. I stand right back here because I don't know how loud my voice is. Now, everything's operating that there. Watch, because when the anointing of the Holy Spirit comes, now, I don't know how loud. It's in another world, and you're speaking, and you, you can't tell. Be real ready. Let the lady be the judge. If anybody, anybody here know this woman? Is there anybody in the building? Yes, there's people back up there in the back. You know. All right, people. That all right, you know whether this is true or not. Let's just pray now. Be real ready. You realize what I'm standing? I'm trying to represent the God that loves you. Trying to bring courage to you to love him and to stay with him and to believe on him and trust him. That's all he does it for. He don't have to do it, but he does it that his word might be fulfilled. He didn't heal back there because he had to, but it might be fulfilled. This is the thing. Of course, seeing you with a Bible in your hand, of course, you could just be stalling with that. But you're not. You're a Christian. You're a believer. Now, I, I do not know you, but now just as Jesus spoke at the well, at the well, or the woman, at the well, rather, then are you aware that something's taking place right there? That's right. I, did you see the picture of that lady? Now, that's just what's making you feel the way you are. If the audience could only see it. In the lady, there's a light standing between she and I. Now, she seems to be moving from me, slowly. She's suffering with a tremendous nervous condition that she wants me to pray for. That is true. Now, being that the woman was shaking, I've seen her. She does that quite often. She's that way. She's been that way for some time. It started with the menopause because she's a younger looking woman when it started. Now, just a moment. Let's talk to her a little more and see if anything else. Yes. Besides that, you've got a trouble that pains in your side. And you've got an internal trouble. And that internal trouble is an intestinal condition. And you've had an operation for that. And that's what caused your pain. You're not from this city. You've come from another city. That's Richmond. Go home. 
Jesus Christ makes you well. Okay. If he knew what was, he surely will know what will be. How do you do? Everyone reverent. Now, real reverent, please. Just keep your seat. Now. Just be praying. Are we strangers to each other, ladies? We are. This is our first time to meet. God knows us both. If he will reveal to me, like he did in the Bible, through his son, Jesus, and now his son was died so that the Spirit could come back on sinners like me and you to do the work of God, to continue the work. you believe that? He said, I am the vine, ye are the branches. Now, the vine doesn't bear fruit. The branch bears fruit. And the branch will bear the same kind of life that's in the vine. That is true, isn't it? Now, if he's the same, that should be the given forever. He will reveal. You are suffering with something that's hurting you in the front part here in the chest. It's under your right side. It's a gallbladder trouble. Not only that, but you got a stomach trouble. That's the cause of an over-secretion of acid. And you're not from this city. You're not from this state. A place near in You are, your name is Mrs. Bessie Worthington. I go on your road home and rejoice and be happy. Do you believe? Yes. Have faith in God. Be real there. You can only believe God will bring it. Now you out there in the audience, it's just the same. You start looking this way. Don't doubt. Get the superstitions away now. And say, Lord God, that preacher just told me, according to your word, that you're the same yesterday and forever. I'm not up there having a prayer card. I don't have no prayer card. But he said that you was a high priest, the same yesterday and forever, and that I could touch you with a feeling of my infirmity. So, Lord Jesus, I believe what the man said is the truth. And I'm coming to you now, and you prove it to me that you are the same. And I'm going to ask you to ask to say to Brother Brown, turn around and tell me something about myself, except I'm in the audience. Anyone will. Be sincere now. See if you'll do it. Just be sincere. Don't doubt. How do you do, sir? The Lord Jesus Christ knows us. To me, you're a stranger. As far as I know, I've never seen you in my life. But God knows both of us. But if the Lord God will reveal to me what your trouble is, will you accept it, sir? Somebody touched him. There's a spirit that's on this man, that's on uh, someone else in here. It's a child, a little boy. He keeps appearing here. Double rupture. The child sitting right there. You have a rupture too. That's exactly right. See that spirit that thought he could get by with that. See how them demons trying to pull one to another? Try out street for help. I followed that black street and seen it. Now you were sitting there praying, wasn't you, sir? You said, if God is what I told you, that's it. I don't doubt. Believe. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. You have a rupture? And I see you somewhere. It seems like you're under a surgery or something. It's a prostrate trouble. You've had an operation for it. A prostrate trouble. You're not from this country either. Looks like Maryland to me. I see a man by you that's praying for you. He's a tall fellow stooped over wearing glasses. You are a minister. 
And it's a brother that's praying for you who is a minister. My God. And you are reverent, deep, deep heart. My God. That's right. Sir, so, so God be with you. Have faith in God. You ladies have just been felt the Spirit of God on you. That high blood pressure you've been praying for. You believe like they were going to die upon you. What did she touch? Who did she touch? The high priest. Not me. She too far from me. Do you believe that one of them? She touched the high priest. That the deep touch with the feeling of our infirmity. Would thou canst believe all things are possible? How do you do, sir? I suppose we're strangers to each other. This is our first time meeting you. What do you think, ladies? You believe this to be the truth? Yes? You think God healed you of that diabetes? Yes, amen. That paralyzed condition? Yes, amen. Stand up on your feet and you may well. Oh, man. Christ has raised from the dead and is the same yesterday, today, and forever. To heal you, I could not. To help you, and if I could and would do it, I'd be an awful person. I wouldn't have the love that I've been preaching about tonight. No, I better go get it myself before I tell others. But he has presented himself to his church. No matter how much he had been anointed, if you didn't believe it, it would never work. It's not me doing this. It's your own faith doing this. It's your faith believing God that does it like it was in the Son of God. Of course, he had the spirit without measure. I just got a little spoonful of it. Like a, a spoonful of water out of the ocean. But the same chemicals in the spoonful is in the whole ocean. The same kind. But he was the Son of God. I'm a sinner saved by grace. But he promised he'd do this. And he keeps his word. You are wanting me to pray for a condition of your it's bottom of your eyes. It's a skin condition that's broke out over you, and it's going into your eyes and hindering your eyes. That's true. You're not from this country either. You're from a place that's North Carolina. And your name is Sister C.C. Campbell. I'll return home and get well. <laughs> if thou canst believe, all things are possible. How do you do, sir? This is our first time meeting, I suppose. I've never seen you before, but God knows you, doesn't he? You believe me to be here today? <coughs> yes, sir. What you're doing here, God bless you. You've been shattered today. Because you're real weak now. And you've had an operation just in the last week or two. And that was a cancer. And that cancer was on the gland. You believe? Not only that, but a woman appears by your side. She's here tonight. I feel her now, fully. That's your wife. And she's all swollen up. And she's scared to answer, too. But put your hands on her, and both of you be healed. In the name of God. If thou then believe, all things are possible. Are you believing? How do you do? Suppose you're a Mennonite brother with your coat. Thank you. I appreciate your stand for Christ. I have hundreds of Mennonite friends. 
Would you have your call, boy? Yes. He's a very good friend of mine. Many other the brethren have been in I never will forget that four morning one night I was having a service. A Mennonite girl was playing the piano. And it brought a little boy to me who was quicker. The Holy Spirit had been telling him about the condition that caused it. And while it pronounced him well, the Mennonite girl was playing the great position now he's near. And the little boy jumped down my arms and ran off the platform, and the mother fainted. The girl jumped up, and those ivory keys continually played the great position now he's near. Hundreds and hundreds of all. Christ still lives. Hallelujah. We are strangers to each other. God knows us both. If the Lord God will reveal to me what you're warning of him, would you believe he'd give it to you? Thank you, sir. Then I pray that you get what you ask for. You're not here for yourself. You're here for somebody that's not here. It's a woman, and she's dying with cancer. That's just faith the Lord. You believe now? You can have what you ask. You you believe in God's heart? Just a moment. Hold your peace to me. Something happened in the audience. Sending everything down. Yes, it is. This woman sitting right in here. Kind of red face. She's praying. She's got sinus trouble, and she wants the Lord to heal her. You accept it as your healing sister? You do? If you do, you can have what you've asked me for. Get thou pleased to me. God bless you. Here, I believe the woman missed it, because the angel left her right away. He goes to another, except I know the angel's got colitis. Do you believe God will heal you that colitis? Or if you have your healing? You know how blessed you went to love your baby? You speak with me to God. Have faith in God. Go down. Every one of you can be healed. Do you believe that? Put it right behind the woman. Setting the third person in around the back row. You're free. You got something wrong with your neck. Do you believe that God will heal you? Bring it up on your feet then. You have your healing. God bless you. Oh, no. I challenge you to Christ things you believe in. Do you believe it? Hallelujah. Like you just said, lay your hands over on each other. Let's not just let us pray right here.